Well, good morning and welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner and the continuation of the series of MyRDB and Ubuntu Server and how we're setting that up and configuring it so that you can control it using a program such as MySQL Workbench or we're going to be using dBeaver. So let's go ahead and we'll get right back to this lesson and I'll show you a couple of things that you have to do just to ensure that you're able to connect being it's been a couple days since our last lesson and we'll go ahead and have a look at what you have to check on your server to make sure everything's ready to go. So let's go ahead and get back to the computer. Okay, so here is our checklist that we created. Today we're going to be connecting to MyRDB using dBeaver to build a database. Seems pretty simplistic. Let me just minimize my Evernote out of the way. And you'll see here, the first thing we're at is our Ubuntu server. And we have to check a couple things here just to make sure that nothing changed on our systems. What I mean by that is if you are running a computer, uh, your host computer or your connecting computer to your database server, you have to make sure the IP address did not change. Being you may have DHCP server, that's quite possible it could have changed. So let me go ahead, I'm going to open up. Uh, again, this is a virtual machine running on my Mac, but this could be on Windows or anything else. You'd go to Command Prompt, or, but we're going to go into Terminal here on my Mac. And I actually want to uh, clear the screen first. All right. So what we're going to look for is we have to know the IP address of our computer that we are connecting to our database server. If you remember, we had to grant privileges to the user account based on the IP address that you're connecting from. It's a very, very critical part of setting up MyRDB correctly so you can interact with it. So I'm going to just do an ifconfig. And if you're on a computer, if you're on a computer, if you're on Windows, you would do ipconfig, ipconfig, and find your local IP address. Let's hit enter. You can see a lot of different connectors in here. A lot of this is my virtualization stuff going on with the computer that I use here to uh, I virtualize some main machines. So I can see my IP address here is 192.168.1.23. So I have to make sure that that is in the MyRDB uh, host list of connecting of computers allowed to connect to the MyRDB server. So okay, 23. I'm going to write this down. Yes, I got old paper. Very good to have paper beside you at all times when you're working on a server. 192.168.1.23. And I teach my students this because if you have a piece of paper, just a piece of scratch paper, you can jot things down and you don't have to keep going back to screens to find out what you forgot. That happens. Let's minimize this. All right, now we are on here. Okay, now that we're on our Ubuntu server, a few things we have to check is, first you can go into MyRDB. So just go sudo MyRDB. Your super secret password. So now you see at the MyRDB prompt, we're inside the database engine. That's what that command line is. We're in the database engine. What we're gonna do from here is look at the host and the user accounts to see which user is allowed to enter from which host, we have to make sure that our IP address is included. So that's very simple to do. Type in select, select, space, host, comma, user, from mysql.user, and don't forget the semicolon. And I see I spelled my SQL wrong. My SQL period user semicolon. So what you're asking here is you're asking the database engine to tell you what user accounts do I have in there and what hosts are they associated with that they're allowed to connect from. Hit enter. And you'll see here my 192.168.1.23 is in there for my admin account that we set up on the last video. If you didn't watch that last video, go back and watch it now so you can learn the configuration. It's very important to configure MyRDB before we actually try to connect to it. 
or you will be just pulling your hair out. That's why I wanted to create this video series to help you very systematically set up MyRDB and prepare it for you to use on a daily basis. So let's say if our new IP address, because you can see I did have 192.168.1.3. That's the address we originally had if you go back in the videos and look when I originally set this up. So my IP address on my home computer actually changed for some reason, probably the DHCP server. I rebooted it a few times, probably for updates, and it got a new IP address. So if I use my up arrow key, I should be able to find this command, grant all on uh, star or asterisk period asterisk to admin, that's the user account that we're using, at and where is it at? What IP address are you connecting to? This is very critical for security also. We don't want anybody on our network to connect into our database server and just put database or go in the database would be even worse yet and delete all your data, uh, manipulate your data. So you want to keep this very, very specific. There are ways that you can open this up for your entire network, but I don't recommend you do that. Just stick with my plan and you'll be safe and secure. So identified by and password is the password we're using. This again is for demonstration purposes only. Don't beat me up in the comments. With grant option. So we're allowing admin to connect for from the IP address using the word password with all privileges, all grant options to all databases. So everything looks fine. We're good. We don't have to do anything here. So I'm going to backspace this out. Oh, also remember, if you have to update this, if your IP address did change, remember you have to do two things. One, you have to flush privileges. Let's do that. That will make sure that any privilege that you changed has been updated and anything you've taken out will be deleted. So you're going to flush the privileges. Type exit to get out of the MyRDB database. The last thing you have to do after flushing your privileges is I cleared the screen and I am going to now type in service. Let's do sudo. sudo service Myra db restart and there so anytime you remember anytime you work on a configuration file on a linux server or, or, or any type of server you should do this if it's a configuration file always restart the service you don't have to stop and start it just restart and it'll do the same thing it'll stop and start and you get the idea so so now I know everything is prepared and ready to go. So now what we need to do is go out and get uh, dBeaver. So let me just minimize my server. Don't close it because we have to keep it running. A lot of my students want to do that. They close the virtual machine and then they can't connect and can't figure out why uh, that's not actually working. So if we go to dBeaver.io, dBeaver.io, it's the dBeaver community tool. It's a great program. I use it on all of my computers, Mac, Windows, and my Linux computers. Uh, just if, if you didn't know, I'm a big uh, Linux Mint fan, and um, it's just, it, it's just, it works, and it's solid, and I really enjoy using it. So, but today we're on the Mac. So you're going to download this version, community version. If you're working in a business and you're, you know, and you're using this, give them the money and buy the Enterprise Edition. It's well worth it. it it's a good program. So let me go ahead and open up my D Beaver. Uh, let me find it. Of course, I got thousands of applications on the computer, right? So that's just the way we roll. So here it is launching. And hopefully I can resize this window quickly here so you can see the whole thing. But just give me a minute. Okay. Now that we have dBeaver installed on your computer and launched, go back to your Linux server and you want to know what the IP address is here. I have config is not found. Hmm. Because Ubuntu for some reason changed it to um, IP space address. Whatever reason. So the address to this server, we have to know that. Let's write that down. 192.168.1.26 
So write down the address to your Linux server. Now, minimize this again. Now let's go ahead and set up a new connection. So we will click on the little connection button. You can see where it will allow you to connect to many different kinds of database engines. But we are using MyraDB. Click Next. Here's something very vital to think about. And my students lose this connection all the time. I can see it's very easy. If you don't work with virtual machines much and you don't work with server-side uh, you know, software a whole lot, you can start to get really lost in all these IP addresses of what is where. The server host, they want to say it's the local host because the virtual machine is running on their computer that they are connecting from. But you have to believe that that virtual machine is running on AWS or uh, Azure. Uh, maybe it's running at Microsoft or Google. Maybe you have a server running at Google. It, you have to pretend that it's not running on your computer. The idea of virtual machines is once you set it up in bridged network mode, which we talked about very early on, setting up a VM, and it's getting an IP from your DHCP server, it is essentially its own computer. Even though, yes, it's running on your host machine, it's not local to that host now. It's a different IP, so it's another computer. So we have to type in the address here to the server host. That would be, we said that was 192.168.1.26. And the port number is 3306, which is a standard port number for SQL Server. Now, if you change that port number to something else and you did something crazy within your config files, write that port number down. Some people do that for security. I just leave it as a standard port. The username will be admin. The password will be our super secret password. Password. And we will hit finish. You can see at the top here, 192.168.126. I clicked the little, some people call this a carrot. My students yell at me. It's like, no, that's just a triangle. Anyway, click on the little carrot. You can see databases. Here's our databases. Here is our users as we've seen earlier when we looked at the terminal program when we were in the Linux server our administration administrator session manager and system info you get a lot of cool system info out of this stuff because you get like session stats you can get global stats you can see all kind of stats coming up session stats will give you some uh, session stats session variables you get the idea so it's just a like i said again really really nice program and it's easy to interact with your databases so now if we go to databases uh let's see here and you say wait so okay how easy is it to make a new database i don't know how to make a new database this is all new to me this is absolutely crazy on this side so if i double click databases i get the ip address again it tells me what the server is, what version we're running, the IP, the time, and our databases. All I got to do is right click and say create a new database. Database name. My new database. My new database. And I just simply click OK. When you do that, there is your new database. And it, you'll see it's over here on the left also we have tables views indexes I'm not going to get into all that how to set up a database if you're this far into it uh, and you want to see more by all means leave in the comments say hey wait how do you build a database because then I'll go into those lessons and I'll show you how to actually build a database and start uh, adding data to it there's so many ways and so many variables to that that I don't really want to get into that in this lesson but all you'd have to do to add tables is double click on tables and just right click and create a new table at that point guys if you've ever used uh, something like I almost hate to say it but the, the one job I had recently they were using um, um, I even forget the name of it now uh, the Microsoft database that was meant for like uh, small offices or small businesses you know what I'm talking about and uh, I said what are you using that for but uh, if you can use that 
you can build tables. And think of building tables as building Excel spreadsheets. It's not rocket science. The only thing is true building of databases. Uh, we might have to do a series on it because true building of databases, you have to have keys. You have to have primary keys, and they have to kind of work with each table to interconnect your data. I've seen people build databases with just like three tables, and they don't relate to each other. It's called a relational database for a reason uh, because it should relate. But So anyway, that is it in a nutshell, how to get into it, how to link dBeaver to it. I hope this video helps you. Uh, I am planning two more in this series on installing and showing you how PHP My Admin works. So you can use a web page and kind of do the same kind of thing as you're doing with this program. So folks, I hope you've enjoyed uh, this video. And if you did, by all means, give it a thumbs up. Please hit the subscribe button. I would uh, enjoy that you're a subscriber here on Jack's Tech Corner or 42 Techno Man. It's been named since a long, long time ago. Um, and I'll see you back here in the next video. If you have any questions, post those in the comments below. Thanks, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.